so I, I, I came up with this tit title um, uh, quite a while ago, uh, and that's because I hadn't really thought about what I'm going to talk, talk about. So it's a generic uh, talk uh, title, but I'm going to really focus on so, uh, three case, case studies, um, how we've turned some of our te technology to real products to help um, reduce post-harvest waste. So, just put things into con context. Um, really, we've, we've, we've got a, a strange climate at, at the moment. We have these food, food spikes. Um, Sean Rickard talked, talked about many of these a a aspects. We have the uh, on ongoing uh, Euro crisis, which seems to have been out of the news, but is still, still there. We have stubbornly high food in, in inflation. Um, low in, in interest rates, uh, decreasing con consumer purchasing power. O organic sales have just dropped off, off a cliff. It's amazing how people's uh, ethical choices are actually governed by how much money they have in their po pocket. Um, price wars and also this waste uh, agenda, which Mary talked a little bit about. Uh, this is an uh, article from the Economist la last year, and this is... I, um, I sort of dug it out, but it says it, e Egypt in, it, in peril. I mean, it's probably got you know, lava coming down, down the sides of it now. But really, this is, this is um, uh, data from fa Family Food, Def DEFRA two, 2009. And it just demonstrates some of the pro problems with uh, fresh produce. So this is the lowest uh, um, quint quintile, so the, 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 the lowest uh, social ec economic grouping. And you can see between 2007 and 2009, we've had a 30% drop in uh, the amount of green, green veg that, that are being bought and con consumed. And you can see with fresh pr produce, this is the same as well. But also for the highest earners, this level of uh, fresh pr produce con consumption has gone, gone down. So this, to me, demonstrates that the um, five-day five policy hasn't really worked very well. This is some uh, work that the Potato Council did in two, 2010, but I think it's uh, relevant still. Um, this is some, some con consumer work, just uh, um, asking um, co consumers why, why, what, what um, demand fa factors um, govern um, the, uh, the reason why they buy, buy potatoes. And price comes out at 25% of all their are answers appearance so people think that you know there's this ugly fruit debate and there is this this belief that that we are throwing away fruit because it doesn't look look right but actually people want their products to actually look look right so if you're a farmer and you go out to grow ugly fruit fruit and vegetables you're not really going to be making a decent living so what really isn't here is actually the waste. And this has really started to come up the uh, agenda recently. Um, and there has been reports. So there was the Institute of um, Mechanical en Engineers. Now, um, Mary, you, you mentioned that report. But um, that, that report to me was actually not one of the best reports that I've ever read. Um, the reason is a lot of the facts behind it were old and they were wrong. Um, it's, it's easy to, to, to state that 30 to 50% of what, what we are buying is being thrown, thrown away. But, but what do you do with that? It's just, it's just a number. It's just a big number, and everyone goes, oh, that's really bad. But what are you going to do about it? And it does, it does depend on which, which product is being wasted, um, where it is being wasted, and why it is being wasted. And once you start to get answers like, like that, then you can target the science to actually try and, try and reduce some of these waste levels. So this is a report we did for RAP in, uh, it was pu published in two, 2011. What we tried, tried to do here, we looked at ele uh, 11 fresh produce types. Um, these range from strawberries, ra raspberries, bananas, avocados, broccoli, so on. And we really wanted to look at the, uh, where, where waste is happening within the chain and also how much waste is, is, is uh, taking place and what, what the causes of that waste were. And we, we basically got our data from um, asking the people that really know where, where the waste is, and that's the industry. Um, so we had to conduct 45 uh, interviews with um, 
uh, all of the major play players from the super supermarkets to, um, uh, to the fresh pro produce growers and so, so on had to un undertake com con confidentiality agreements with every single one of them. So there are no names in this report at all. Um, and, these, and these numbers, um, I'm not saying they're absolutely correct, but this is the first time that we've, we've, ab we've, we've been able to break, break down uh, some of the um, levels of waste from farm, farm gate to back of store. So this sort of uh, dove, dovetails some of the work that RAP had done in two, 2006 and two, 2009. And you can see that there are big ranges. Um, and the thing about waste is there is a difference between waste and loss. Okay? Now, for example, if we think about uh, some of this apple waste, now it's loss, loss here because the some of that nine to uh, it's that five to, to twenty-five five percent still actually has a pur purpose. It's either turned in, in, in into juice, it's put back on to the land, or so on. Now that still has a uh, a residual value. It's just not what its in, in intended use was. So it's just it, it's it's important to to read in, in into this, but actually see the underlying. Causes and one of the things that we that, that we did, and this is work, work we, we did with colleagues in uh, Cranford School School of Management, is that short shelf life does not automatically mean more waste. Okay, so if you think about so that, there, there is this this belief: if you extend the shelf life of a fresh product type, then you will reduce waste, and that is not always the the case. I'll give you an example: bananas. Ripe, ripe bananas have a very short shelf, sh shelf life, but the level of waste of bananas is actually quite, quite low. And the reason for that is nine out of 10 shopping trips contain bananas, and the demand is flat. Okay? There's only a, a small, a small, rise, a small uh, dip during school holidays where bananas aren't, aren't, aren't put in lunch boxes. Okay? But for things like uh, you know, strawberries or, or, or where, where demand is actually less um, flat, then we can some, sometimes see large um, losses. So, for example, we look at field loss here. Okay, a lot of what this this looks like a low a low number, but actually, uh, a lot of strawberries are lof, are left on the plant where there isn't a demand because it, it takes up about fifty percent of all of all costs in terms of picking. Okay, so this just gives gives a bit of uh, context. So now I'm going to talk uh, about three product types, and I'm going to talk about three uh, non-climacteric products where ethylene does have a major effect. So I'm going to talk about potato, onion, and uh, soft fruit, um, you know, strawberry fruit. So we did some work um, showing that you can extend storage life of potatoes by up, up to six, six weeks by uh, storing them in 10 p ppm of ethylene. So these are very low ethylene producers, but if you store them in 10 p ppm of ethylene, you can extend s s storage life. We've also shown that um, this is a, a very simple trial, tr trial we did, and I'm just giving the, the uh, f physiology. We did a lot, a, a lot more, more behind, behind this. But effectively, this is uh, Sil Silvana stored in air, and you can see that uh, this is for six, six months at six degrees, and you can see that they started to, to sprout. In con continuous ethylene, they didn't sprout. But what, what we, we also did is we showed that if you um, have a swap treat treatment, so it, it stand, stands to, re to reason that the, uh, f the, f the physiological needs of a product will, will change as it a, a, a ages. There will be differences in its physiology as governed by genetics and uh, storage, storage con con conditions. And what, what we did here is when uh, endodormancy had started to break, we moved our air to ethylene and our ethylene to air. And you can see that where we've moved from air to ethylene, we still get exactly the same result as we do with con con continuous ethylene. And this means that there is the possibility of rather than treating the, the uh, storage pra practitioner uh, storing for six months in ethylene, they only have, have to do it for three, th three months. But you can see if you go from ethylene to air, you don't get any con control. So there's something strange going on, on here that we want, to, we want to understand. 
So other work that we've done. So um, Onion, again, is, is a, a non-climate uh, turret ter ter product. Again, you can extend storage life by uh, storing it in 10 p ppm. And you can extend storage life by about six to eight weeks. Okay. Now, again, this, this, is, this is odd because most ethylene research has been done on climate terror pro products where the, res where the responses to ethylene are quite well, well known. So this is a paper we got out uh, about 18 months, months ago. You don't have to read all of it. It's just to demonstrate that there, there are that this uh, basic research can actually lead to practical out outcomes. So we've shown in this work, if you store onions in ethylene, you can e extend st storage life. If you, store, if you treat them with um, one M uh, MCP, which is an ethylene binding in inhibitor, you would expect that that would do the opposite. In fact, we, we showed that one M uh, MCP also extends storage life. And if you store in ethylene, uh, ethylene and one M uh, MCP, you actually extend storage life even more. Okay? And we've, and we've gone some way into understanding some of the reasons for, for this. So just back to the physiology, uh, if you just look at things like sprouts, sprout length, this is uh, stored, uh, onion stored at one, one degree for 25 five weeks. You can see this is um, sprout length as a percentage of bulb height, you can see that with ethylene and 1-MCP, you get a much lower, um, uh, you get a, 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 an extension of storage life. And this, there is something here that is uh, happening with the in increase in the, or transient in increase in, res in respiration rate. Other things that we're trying, tr trying to do, this is just a, a, a standard P PCA map, uh, and this is uh, onions stored um, uh, over six, six months, um, so this is at, at harvest, so you know, zero, one is after uh, curing, three is uh, in the middle of storage, and four is at, is at the end of storage. So here what, what, what we're trying, tr trying to do is understand some of the biomarkers that actually govern um, the, the tr tr transition from true dormancy, from endodormancy to eco-dormancy. And hopefully some of these comp compounds will not only enable us to understand the pro process, but could act as um, uh, storage markers or biomarkers to enable storage pra pra practitioners to then release crop before um, it has uh, broken dormancy. So this has led to uh, a new, a new pro pro project, which I just thought I'd hi highlight. It's being um, uh, led by James Hutton. It's part of the BBSRC um, Happy Call. Um, it involves uh, colleagues from uh, Greenwich, from Imperial Col College, and, uh, and, and, and from Cram Cramfield. So we're hoping to build on some of the work that we've done in my, in my lab and also uh, the work that uh, Glenn, Glenn Bryan uh, and, and his colleagues are doing at James, James Hutton to really understand whether there is actually a, a com com commonality uh, between these two dif uh, different crops. So it's quite a risky pro pro project, but we're hoping to use some of the, the work that we have um, uh, built, built on to actually get practical out outcomes rather than just understanding a pro pro process is actually to move it for forward into the commercial market. So now I'm going to just finish off uh, talking about uh, strawberry fruit. And this is um, rather than uh, treating with ethylene, this is actually taking ethylene away. Now, there's been quite a bit of work um, recently on trying to understand the role of ethylene and other P P PGRs in uh, strawberry fruit. And uh, we had a conference here last, last week, um, which was, uh, had 155 people, 43 different uh, countries here. It was the first um, post-harvest uh, conference that had uh, been held in the UK for over 25 years. And we, uh, one of the uh, presentations for, was, was from one of my PhD students. And this is just to, to reiterate to, to take a, an idea to a, to a pro product, it does take time. We've, we first started working with Johnson Mathy, who are a um, precious metal uh, FTSE 100 company in two, 2006. And together with, with them, we uh, developed a uh, palladium-based uh, ethylene uh, um, uh, re re remover, which um, 
is able to remove ethylene um, to sub, uh, physiologically active levels even under cold uh, temp temperatures and high relative hu humidity. This then led, led to a number of P P PhDs, con contract research, and then the, um, the, uh, the work was, uh, or the, the uh, te technology was licensed out to a company called It's Fresh. And now uh, this, th this product is, is being sold. Um, so it, it is, it is um, believed to extend storage life of um, strawberry fruit by up to two, two days. So I was saying that um, in increasing shelf, sh shelf life doesn't al al always um, uh, lead to uh, uh, less waste. But whether demand is difficult to, to predict because of uh, differences in weather and so, so on. Having these types of very simple te 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 technologies, it's, it's not a simple technology, it's simple to use. Um, we were a a able, um, it's now uh, sold um, in Marks and Spencer, Waitrose and, and uh, uh, others. So this is just, it is possible to do basic science and move it to the commercial domain as long as you have the right industry par partners on, on board. So with that, I'd just like to, to, to thank some of the funders uh, of, this, of this work, some of the collaborators, and this was a, a picture of my group taken uh, last week when the weather was so, so nice, so happy to answer any questions. Thank you.